to have and to hold. We marry. Sometimes we keep dangling the carrot of matrimony for the purposes of future faking and keeping a primary source interested and working hard to keep our favour. Other times, it happens quickly in that whirlwind of the narcissistic seduction for the purpose of ensuring that you are bound to us tightly and as quickly as possible, so that we have the comfort and satisfaction that you, as our wonderful new primary source, are firmly embedded and attached to us. A swift engagement, with the wedding following hard on the heels. It is a customary move of our kind to enter into a marriage. We give the appearance of being utterly devoted to you, smitten, and with our love-bombing and repeated protestations of love and desire, it is little wonder that the victim readily says yes, and has the engagement ring slipped on her finger, and the planning for the wedding itself happens minutes later. Marriage is important to the narcissist. Not the actual institution, although we will make a great show of emphasising just how important it is, what it means to us, and how we could not wait to get married. All good material for ensnaring the victim and maintaining the facade. When that day comes, what goes through the mind of the narcissist when he or she is stood before the altar, in a registry office, or atop a cliff, overlooking the sea in a civil ceremony? What is the narcissist thinking about as the priest or registrar conducts the ceremony? What thoughts percolate through the mind of our kind, with the guests all stood behind us, staring in rapt attention and admiration, smiles plastered across faces, and the occasional tear trickling from the eye of the emotional onlooker? What are we considering as the hymns are sung, the readings are read, and the service proceeds? I shall endeavour to tell you, from the perspective of a male narcissist, by reference to a traditional ceremony. Imagine, if you will, bride and groom are stood side by side, excited smiles exchanged, and eventually the vows are reached. I, H. G. Tudor, take you, Victoria Tim, to be my lawfully wedded wife. What am I thinking? I chose her. I chose her above all of the others. She looks amazing, but then so she should, because it's for me. I knew she would look so beautiful, and all these people gathered here would be looking at her and thinking how beautiful she looks, and how lucky I am to have married her. There was no look involved, of course. I planned this, and it made perfect sense to marry, so she is bound to me now. I don't mind them all looking, because although they might be looking at her, I chose her, so the ad admiration of her is actually admiration of me. I am looking forward to walking down the aisle with her. So many faces, and all looking at us. I can barely keep still as it is now, knowing that so many hundred pairs of eyes are fixed on my back, watching us. This is brilliant. I should get married every week. The whole day is about us, but I know really it is all down to me. I chose her. I drew her to me. I am the one that created this wonderful union, and I get to spend the entire day basking in the glorious attention and well-wishes of the congregation and wedding guests. Even more of them will turn up for the evening reception. So many guests. But that is what becomes of being so popular. I wonder if the predecessor primary source, what was her name again? Wendy, that's it. I wonder if she turned up. She accepted the invitation. Not that Victoria knows she is a former girlfriend, but the pained look and frozen smile that I am expecting from Wendy will give me an extra special boost. To have and to hold. Oh, she is mine all right, and I want to make her happy, because then she will make me happy. I do think I have got it right this time. Everything seems so right about her. She likes everything that I like. She is so helpful and caring. I picked very carefully, after the disappointment of the others, like Wendy and so on. I should have invited some of the others, actually. That would have been very entertaining to see their faces when I walked down the aisle with my beautiful wife, my wife, mine. She belongs to me all right, and this time it's going to work. I'm sure I've selected the right one. I have her, and I will have her time and time again. I know how to delight her, and she responds magnificently to my touch. Well, to be honest, they all usually do. But this one, more so than the others. Another reason I chose her. Yes, she is mine to have, 
and I am always going to hold on to her. I treat her well. I really do. That's because I adore her. There are so many reasons why I do. She is clever. She is witty. She is beautiful. She looks after me. She understands what I need. I know that to be the case. This is why I chose her, and this is why I married her. You don't let someone this good wriggle free. So I will indeed have her and hold her, Mr. Priest. I will hold on to her very tightly indeed. From this day forward, for better, for worse. There will be plenty of better because that is what she and I are about. We fit together so perfectly. My soulmate. I deserve her and she is delighted to have me as her new husband. I know, because she has talked of little else since the engagement. It was quick, but so what? You snooze, you lose, as the saying goes. Yes, lots of better. We are so fortunate to have what we have, more than most people. But then we are not the ordinary people. I know I have elevated her, but she has accepted that with good grace and enthusiasm, just as I thought that she would. She will do as she is told. I was pleased she didn't go in for that modern rubbish of excluding her vow to honour and obey. If she had resisted that, well, there would have been a problem. I know some couples both say it to one another, but I am a traditionalist. I wear the trousers. Of course I will honour her, she knows that, but uh, I do not need to say it. Besides, I decide what I do, not some vows. Don't get me wrong, I intend to stick to them. But if something happens, well, I have to do what is right for me. I am hoping she gives, keeps giving me what I need, and that day does not come. But if she does mess up, I don't think she will, but let's just say for the sake of discussion and argument that she does mess up, well, I will have to ensure I have other options. I mean, she will be a grade-A idiot if she does that. After all, she is getting a great deal with me. But you can't be a fool and rule it out. Not after what I have seen with the other ones. I do think she is different, so, fingers crossed, we will not have to go down that route. So yes, I intend to honour her. Obey. You can fuck that sky high. I do what I want. I am the doer, not the done too. Obey? Seriously? That one is for her. And believe me, you would better fucking comply with it, or there will be serious repercussions. But hey, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I know she will. That's why I chose her. It is important that she does obey me, because that way we stand the best chance of happiness and success. If she obeys me, which I know she will, I will keep her happy, not have to do what I have done with the others. Still, let's not think about that on a day such as this. I don't have to obey. She will. That is all that matters. For Richard. No problems there, El Vicaro. I have Wedge, and so has she. That box is well and truly ticked. How much longer will this go on for? I think I'll have a cheeky peek over my shoulder. That bridesmaid's rather tasty. Natasha, isn't it? Victoria's friend from university. She is totally wanting some of me. There we are again, that little grin and the bite of the bottom lip. Oh yes, well, too bad, Natasha. This isn't your gig, but if it does go tits up, not that it will... I will look you up of that, you can be assured. The poorer. Not going to happen, so no concerns about that. Easy to agree with that one, Mr. Man of the Cloth. Come on, when are we getting finished? I want to show off the vintage champagne that I've bought. That will impress our old man. He loves that kind of thing. There he is, proud as punch that his girl has been chosen by HG here. Let's give him a wink. He liked that, wink back. You wouldn't be winking at me like that if you know what I'm going to be doing to your daughter tonight. Hell yeah. Must have laughed then. I'm getting a sideways glance from soon-to-be Mrs. H.G. Give her the smile. There we go. Melting straight away. Easy. In sickness and in health. Bollocks to that, matey boy. Who do you think I am? Some kind of fucking nursemaid. She gets ill, she deals with it. And anyway, she can go and see the quacks. That's why I pay private health insurance. Don't expect me to be arsing around looking after her, though. I have other things to get on with. Of course, it's a different proposition for me. I am in rude health, strong as an ox, fine mind and so on. I don't get ill. Being ill is for the saps and for the weaklings. But if I'm hurt, I dare say with me, it'd be something pretty serious. It's going to slow me down. Then I know she will run around after me. 
After all, who wouldn't? I am worth it. Until death do us part. Absolutely right, Daddy-o. That's the only way she is getting away from me, when either her or me shuffles off this mortal coil. This is for life.